Hey everybody, this is Gregory from Dappy Diversity. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about which blockchain is the best. So before we get into that, be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and click the like button down below. And also, if you're interested in learning how to build blockchain technology, you can download my courses for free on my website over at dappuniversity.com forward slash free download. So which blockchain is the best? And really what I wanna talk about today is this crazy fight that happens all the time. All these fights happen about this blockchain's the best, that blockchain's the best. You know, people are dissing all these other blockchains, trying to make theirs look better. So this can be so confusing. And honestly, it's really annoying. And I get so tired of it that I just wanted to make a video for you all in case you're experiencing some of the same kinds of uh, frustration or even confusion. So I want to dig into this problem a little bit. So this has been going on forever, even before blockchain technology kind of came onto the scene. You know, if you've been a programmer before um, or you've ever worked any other technology, you see these kinds of fights happen over programming languages, over frameworks, over databases, over any technology, really, that you can use to just build stuff that end users use and get value out of, right? So um, you might have seen this where people say, oh, my programming language is better. You know, my framework is better and yours is bad. And then you just start dissing yours to make theirs look better, right? They try to give you all the reasons. And if you like to argue, you might argue with them. And if you don't, you might just sort of back away and not talk to them anymore. <laughs> so, and this is a lot like religious fanaticism or like it's almost cult-like sometimes where people will just be very dogmatic and just like throw reasons down your throat and want to get into arguments all the time. And it's not a commentary on religions or anything like that. It's not what I mean to say. It's just that People treat, you know, these technologies like it's the one thing that gives them purpose in life and the one thing that, you know, divides other people. So, I, I mean, if you've been around as a, you know, as a programmer before and looked at other, you know, programming languages, you know that there's not one general purpose programming language to rule them all that does everything, right? You know, technology always has a purpose. They're always tools, tools that do some things well and not other things well, Right. And, you know, it's just an example, like JavaScript is good at certain things and not good at others, right? And if you want to, you know, build client-side interactions in a web browser, you know exactly what you're going to use. You're going to use JavaScript. Um, but, you know, if you're going to build like a web application, a server, right, there's lots of different choices you can use. And some of those factors depend on, you know, the programming languages you already know and, you know, the ones that do the job that you want to do, right? Sometimes there's multiple options and sometimes it can even come down to just personal preference at the end of the day, right? If you know multiple languages and multiple frameworks, it just kind of just depends on which one you actually want to use for that job. So this is not a new thing, right? This has been happening in technology for a long time. And it's really part of blockchain adoption and growth. And it's particularly hard in blockchain technology because there's this extra layer of financial speculation that you know pollutes uh, this argument even further, makes it more toxic, right? So these are the other factors of like uh, FOMO, right? The fear of missing out and also loss aversion that uh, are really deeply ingrained in people's psyche when they're having these arguments. So what do I mean by that, right? If you spent any time on Twitter, you've seen, you know, people uh, shilling projects, shilling ICOs, shilling blockchain projects um, because they're trying to raise, you know, money and there's technology behind it. And in order to make themselves look good, you know, they'll try to make other projects look bad. So, so this blockchain is terrible. This technology is terrible. It doesn't have any users. It doesn't have any developers, right? Why don't all you developers come work for me? Yada, 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 right? You see all this kind of stuff happen. And then people, you know, watching this, either they fight about it, they you know, retaliate and try to argue with them about why they're wrong and why their solution is better, why their blockchain is better, why their technology is better. And then it just ends up with this, you know, just fight that never goes anywhere, right? It's like a stalemate. It's like trench warfare or people just lobbing, you know, insults and stabs back, you know, back and forth, right? And 
sometimes you see people just on the sidelines who don't participate. They just observe these kind of conversations. A lot of developers struggle with you know self doubt already, and this just makes it worse. You know, when they're trying to like figure out what technology they want to work with. And then they get online, see all these people saying, oh, this technology is terrible. You need to be doing this one. You need to be doing this one. You need to be doing this one, right? It kind of leads to like this shiny object syndrome. And I don't know who to trust. I don't know who to listen to. And it makes it extra difficult in this time when we're trying to figure out, you know, where the technology is going and you don't know what always is going to be around. And what's, you know, it's, it's just, it makes it extra hard. And that's kind of why I'm making this video is to call a lot of this out, a lot of the BS that's out there. Um, so we can kind of sift through it and get down to, you know, what's actually really important, right? So try to stay away from the financial speculation side of it, where people are yelling and arguing about this stuff and just know that those kinds of conversations can trickle down to the, you know, the, the developer world, right? And there's so much that that's just toxic. That's almost like gossip like, and people want to fight about this and you should really just do your best to try to ignore most of it. I mean, that's what I try to do, right? I mean, at the end of the day, there are people who are loud and opinionated who are 100% right, right? And so you can listen to them and try to critically, like, you know, discern what they're saying and, like, take their, um, you know, thoughts to heart and try to, you know, consider them. But if you don't know what you're talking about and you don't understand blockchain te technology in general, you're not going to have a very critical <laughs> perspective, right? So especially if you're just getting started, like, just try to cut it off. Don't really try to listen to it that much. And what I would say is, you know, all this really leads to just bad ideas and beliefs about how technology evolves in the first place, right? You see these people kind of talking about all these weaknesses, but the nature of uh, a nascent technology is that we don't know where it's going. We don't know really the full, you know, potential of it and how it's going to stick. And that's just part of being in this ecosystem, right? No one has a crystal ball. Anyone that claims that they do have a crystal ball is just as bad as somebody who says they know exactly what the price of Bitcoin is going to be in two weeks, in six months, in a year, right? No one knows. And always just stay away from people who make unsubstantiated claims, don't have sound reasoning, and basically just seem like a charlatan, right? Just stay away from those people. And if you're new to the space, just try to stay away from people who make unsubstantiated claims, who don't have sound reasoning, and really just seem like charlatans. Just stay away from them. Um, and, you know, so if you're trying to figure out what technology to use, which blockchain is best, you know, try to consider your use cases. Like, what are you trying to accomplish, right? Are you trying to work with cryptocurrency? Are you trying to work with financial transactions? Are you just trying to use a general purpose blockchain, right? Are there, um, you know, resources to, you know, have tools to build what you need to build, is there a developer ecosystem that's supporting those tools and has like a knowledge base that you can lean on whenever you get stuck? You know, are there educational resources like this channel to teach you how to use the technology, right? Is there good documentation? And also, are there users of the blockchain that are going to, you know, use whatever you build? So that's what I would say if you're trying to figure out which blockchain to use and which one is best. And, you know, at the end of the day, trying to stay away from all the financial speculation um, I would say that you really just want to pick the blockchain technology that you personally just believe in for the long term and which one you're most excited about. You know, which one do you mesh with? Which one, you know, has uh, similarities to technology you've already worked with before? Or if you haven't, which one has the best learning resources for you to get started on? Things like that. So that's really, at the end of the day, the best blockchain for you. So if y'all like this video, hope you found it helpful. Again, as always, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and click the like button down below. And if you're interested in learning how to build blockchain technology, you can download my courses for free on my website over at dappuniversity.com forward slash free download. And until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.